Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through the solution to our utility maximization exercise. If you haven't done so already, I recommend that you attempt the problem and then come back when you're done. We start out with our utility function, u of xy equals x to the 3 fourths, y to the 1 fourth. The first thing we'll do is find the marginal utility functions. For the marginal utility of x, we take the partial of the utility with respect to x. The 3 fourths comes down, and then we subtract 1 from that. 3 fourths minus 1 is negative 1 fourth, and then the y just comes along. We do the same thing for the marginal utility of y. Partial with respect to y. The 1 fourth comes down this time. The x comes along, and for the y, 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. Next, we are going to write out our marginal rate of substitution of x for y. You could also do the marginal rate of substitution of y for x as long as you stay consistent later on. To do this, we take the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y. To simplify this down a bit, we can first recognize that whenever we have a negative exponent, we can move that term to the other side of the fraction and then flip the sign of our exponent. This means our x to the negative 1 fourth is going to come down to the bottom, and our y to the negative 3 fourths is going to come up to the top. What we get here is 3 fourths. Now we have our y to the fourth, but in addition to that, we've moved our y to the 3 fourths up to the top and flipped the sign of our exponent. On the bottom, 1 fourth, x to the 3 fourths. Now we've moved our x to the 1 fourth down there. This is also a good time to simplify our coefficient. We notice that there is a 1 fourth here on the top and a 1 fourth on the bottom. Those are going to cancel. Next, when we multiply y to the 1 fourth times y to the 3 fourths, we add up the exponents. Those, of course, add up to 1. We can say the same thing about the x's on the bottom. This leaves us with 3y over x. And that is our marginal rate of substitution of x for y. The next thing that we're going to do is solve for our demand functions for x and y. To do that, we are going to have to set up our system of equations. This is where our budget line comes in. Pxx plus Pyy equals m. That is to say that our total amount spent on x plus our total amount spent on y needs to add up to our total income of m. In our system of equations, this is equation number one. Our second equation is our marginal rate of substitution of x for y equals the price ratio px divided by py. Earlier I mentioned that you could do the marginal rate of substitution of y for x and take the marginal utility of y divided by the marginal utility of x. If you do that, then you're going to have to flip the price ratio as well. You'd have py over px. As long as you keep it consistent, then it does not matter which way you do it. This is going to be equation number two. We now have two equations with two unknowns. That's x and y, and we're ready to solve. What I'm going to do is take equation number two, and I'm going to multiply both sides by py. That'll give me 3pyy over x equals px, then I'm going to multiply both sides by x, and that's going to give me 3pyy equals pxx. I can now use substitution to notice that we have a pxx here and a pxx over here, so anytime I see pxx in my budget line, I can substitute in 3pyy. That's going to give me 3pyy plus pyy equals m. I can combine terms to get 4pyy equals m. Divide both sides by 4py, and that'll give me y equals m over 4py. That is my demand function for y. 
To finish this off, I can now take that y and plug it into either of my equations and solve for x. I'm going to use the budget line. So we're going to have px x plus py y, but we now know that y is m over 4 py equals m. Py's cancel, and we're left with just m over 4 over here. I'm now going to subtract m over 4 from both sides, which will give us px x equals 3m over 4. Now just divide both sides by px, and that's going to give me x equals 3m over 4px. So our demand functions are going to be y equals m over 4py, and x equals 3m over 4px. Now that we have our demand functions, we can figure out our consumer equilibrium by plugging in numbers for m, px, and py. In our case, we have m equals 100, px equals 5, and py equals 2.5. We'll start with y equals 100 over 4 times 2.5, which is 10. For x, we have 3 times 100 divided by 4 times 5, which is going to be 15. The last thing that we will do is draw a graph. I'll put y on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal axis. To draw the budget line, we first need to plug the numbers into our budget line equation. So we have px is 5, so we have 5x plus 2.5y equals 100. To figure out the y-intercept for our budget line, we can plug in 0 for x, which gives us 2.5y equals 100. y equals 100 over 2.5, which is 40. So we have 40 over here. If we then plug in 0 for y, we get 5x equals 100. Therefore, x equals 20. This means our x-intercept is going to be 20. I'll draw my budget line in like so. This means our budget set is the whole area inside of that line. Next we'll mark out our consumer equilibrium. We had 10y and we had 15x. So our equilibrium point is going to be right here. We can then sketch an indifference curve. We don't know exactly what it looks like, but it'll be something like this that will be tangent to the budget line at that point. We also have to make sure that when we draw this, we are following the rules of indifference curves, which means that we can't have one that sort of curls back like this uh, or up like this. They can't look like that. To finish this off, let's figure out exactly which indifference curve we are on. For that, we need to figure out exactly how much utility our consumer is getting, so we can plug in our numbers into the utility function. We have 15x and 10y, so we have 15 to the 3 fourths times 10 to the 1 fourth. Plug that into my calculator and get 13.55. This means the particular indifference curve we are on is the one for u equals 13.55. Of course, that number by itself doesn't really mean anything. It just means that all of the bundles on this indifference curve give us the same utility of 13.55. But if we were to be on a higher indifference curve like this one, all these bundles would give us more than 13.55 utility. And that's all there is to it. This might seem complicated at first, but once you've gotten a few of these under your belt, they're not so bad. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.